Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for taking the time to stop by for a visit today. Let's open in prayer. Father, illuminate our hearts, please. Turn the light on. Shine the wonderful light of your glory into our hearts as we look at the book of Jude today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in my last video, I was in the short little book of Jude and actually ended that video with the blessing that is at the end of the book of Jude. As I said in the last one, I love that blessing very, very much. But we're starting at the beginning of the book of Jude today. Jude introduces himself at the beginning of his book. He only wrote one book of, that's in the uh, accepted canon for the Protestant Bible, and that's the book of Jude, the book which bears his name. He states that he's a half-brother, uh, I'm sorry, that he is a brother of James, and we know that um, James was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. James and Jude were both biological children of Joseph and Mary. We read in both Mark 6, 3 and Matthew 15, 55 to 56, that Jesus had several half-brothers and sisters, the biological offspring of Joseph and, Mar Joseph and Mary. Uh, Jude goes on to state in verse 1 that he's a slave to Jesus Christ. That's the message version. He mentions this before he even mentions the fact that he was Jesus' half-brother. And at the time that Jude wrote his letter to a community of unnamed Christians, we don't really know um, who it was that specifically which group to which he was writing. Um, but at, at any rate, at the time he wrote his letter, Jesus had already ascended to heaven where he now sits at the right hand of the Father, of God the Father. So it seems that Jude is saying here that he's a slave to his Savior, Jesus. Not to his brother, but uh, that in the spiritual lordship sense, he's a slave to Jesus Christ. He's clearly identifying himself not only as one who knew Jesus very well, but who also has wholeheartedly embraced Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. He's, he's embraced completely the way that Jesus preached. In verse 4, for example, he refers to Jesus as his one and only master. Jude was convinced, y'all. He believed. Now, it wasn't always that way. Uh, there's another scripture in the New Testament which speaks of Jesus' brothers and sisters thinking that he was a raving loon. Uh, so possibly James also, but certainly Jude uh, was uh, most likely one of those. Probably both of them were in that category at one time. But um, after Jesus finished his work here on earth and was raised from the dead, um, they got a clearer picture of who Jesus Christ really was. He wasn't just the big brother. Jude states in his letter that he and other believers have been called and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? Well, the calling, I think, is a, a, a uh, term that's familiar to many of you. Um, and I've written about the aspect of calling and election and predestination in other blog posts. So, uh, as I'm prone to say, I'm not going to plow that ground over. But uh, in this post, that is, I'm going to focus on the aspect of being kept safe, which alludes back to my title for this post, I Am a Kept Woman. Um, but Jude begins his letter toward the beginning of his letter. He starts with this assurance that believers are not only called, but they're sanctified and they are preserved by Jesus Christ. Um, and he, uh, he finishes the book with that. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. It seems pretty obvious that Jude believed in that concept, the security of the believer. In other words, once you become Jesus Christ, you are ever his. Jesus knows those of us who are his, those who made decisions to accept him as Lord and Savior. 
He knows exactly which ones of us would choose him. He knew what we were going to choose before the foundations of this world were ever laid. And he's also promised to hold on to those of us whose hearts have been reborn, whose souls have been irrevocably transformed, no going back, whose bodies now house his Holy Spirit. With his blood he bought us and he will keep us forever. There's another way in which Jesus keeps his bride, us believers, from falling. It's through his power that we are able to resist temptation. I don't know about you, but when I think about my own personal weaknesses, um, my own efforts to keep myself from falling are about 100% futile. Okay? Um, when I attempt in my own strength to resist temptation... We all have our personal, what some people call besetting sins. In other words, they're the things that are most prone to trip you up. Uh, yours is most likely not the same as mine, uh, but we can each of us think of what those things are. And we can think about how we are pretty much powerless to present, prevent ourselves from falling into traps associated with those sins. The Apostle Paul in Romans 16, 25 to 37 talks about um, how Jesus' power establishes us, grounds us in our faith. Um, and another point that he makes in 2 Corinthians 5 is that we are designed as new creatures in Christ to run to him when we're inclined to stumble. In other words, when we face a temptation, we're designed to seek him out, to pray to him, in order to draw our power from him, that power that keeps us from falling. That power is found in none other, not ourselves, not in some external force, not in some self-help program. It is found in him alone. No other being, no other thing should get the glory that rightfully belongs to our Savior. Isn't the word of God so very beautiful? I'm a kept woman. How about you? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for your son and for leaving your spirit here until your work on earth is done. I'm so glad that because you live in me, I don't have to hold on to my eternal salvation. You hold on to me. It's because you hold on to me that I'm free to walk in your way and to offer my life to you daily as an act of worship. I do that today and walk resplendent. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's been wonderful to share with you over the word today. The address of my blog is on the screen. I hope that you'll go there and follow my blog. And if you want to watch more of these videos, just to subscribe to this YouTube channel.